Hello, today I have a comic strip for you called Jack Silver. I'm going to read the comic strip and explain all the difficult words and expressions. This is a perfect source of comprehensible input, which is the best way to learn any language. And that means you're going to listen, understand and also enjoy it. If these things are happening, understanding and enjoying, then you will automatically learn the language and improve your grammar. So let's get started. Why not? The title of this comic strip is Jack Silver. And this here is Jack. He's a kind of superhero kind of superhero. He has some special powers. He can do some special things. Now here is the uh, preface, the preface, the bit that tells us something about the story before we start. The preface. So Curly Perkins had been whizzed to the weird and wonderful planet of Marsuvia by a friendly space kid called Jack Silver. So Curly Perkins is this boy and he had been whizzed, so he was taken very quickly. If you whiz somewhere, you move, you whiz, you move somewhere very quickly. So he had been whizzed to this planet by this character, this kid called Jack Silver. And they're on this planet now and the name of the planet is Marsuvia. Marsuvia. So Jack says, Look at this, Curly. Lovely Marsuvian giant Zumblebum bee honey and plenty of it. So Jack has found this honey, honey, which bees make and you can put on toast or you can put it in your tea. If you have a bit of a cold, <coughs> maybe you put a little honey in your tea and bees make this honey and he has found it and he has found plenty of it. Plenty is a way to say more than enough. So there's more than enough honey for you and me. There's plenty. And he's removing the honey with one of his special powers. It looks like he has a laser power. He can shoot a laser zzz from his finger. And he's cutting the honeycomb off of the rock. The honeycomb is the thing that's hard. You can eat it, but it's very, very hard that the, the, the uh, bees produce. So here it looks like it's stuck. It's stuck to the rock. Uh, so he's removing it with his laser power. And Curly says, sweet, sweet. And sweet, of course, sweet is something that is not salty, like chocolate is sweet or ice cream is sweet, or cake is sweet. However, in slang English, or colloquial English, sweet also means fantastic, or great. It's a word that often kids or young people use to say great. Sweet, sweet, that's sweet, fantastic. And Jack responds, it certainly is curly. Why does Jack say that? Probably because the honey is actually sweet. It tastes sweet as well. <clears throat> so it's a great situation and the honey is actually sweet. And then Curly says, what's that? And he looks upwards. And Jack is has removed the honey or the honeycomb and he's putting it in his backpack. He's putting it in his backpack. He's jamming it in his backpack. <clears throat> jamming it in. And he says, what? That buzzing sound, the one that's like a thousand giant Zumblebum bees returning to their nest. <laughs> so, what's that buzzing sound? That buzzing sound, bzzz, buzzing is bzzz. That buzzing sound, the one that is like a thousand giant Zumblebum bees returning to their nest. The one that sounds like all of these bees going back to their nest, to their home. And Curly says, yes, that one. <laughs> yes, that sound. A 
And Jack says, well, that would be a thousand giant Zumblebumbees returning to their nest. So it's exactly what it sounds like. And Curly says, run for it. And Jack says, don't panic. Simply hop aboard the hover scooter. Hop aboard is the same as what, same as saying jump aboard. Get on, get on something. So you could say hop on a bike, hop on a motorbike, or hop in my car, hop on the boat, hop aboard the scooter, or hop on the scooter. So it's a way to say just get on, but in a slightly more colloquial way. Jump on or hop on. And you can see that uh, Jack looks very relaxed. He is not worried at all about these Zumblebum bees. And Curly says, oh yes, phew, 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 is a way to say, that's a relief. Whew, phew, phew. And in English, we write that P-H-E-W, phew. So when something bad is going to happen and then it doesn't, or you avoid the situation, you can say, phew. There, I suppose people don't really say it very often. It sounds a bit funny to say it, but it's the kind of thing you would read quite a lot, or you might write in a text message, phew. Especially with that little emoji that goes, Whoo. Now, Jack at this point says, it won't start. It won't start. And you can see these little drops of sweat coming off of his face because he is panicking in this moment. The hover scooter, the hover scooter will not start. And also hover, hover means to float just a little bit off the ground, to float, to hover. So when you think about a future, futuristic uh, cities in cartoons or futuristic uh, places in cartoons or in films, quite often they have hover cars or hover scooters or hover bikes, things that don't touch the ground, they hover above it. So they both look at each other and scream, run for it! Run for it. It's a funny expression, actually. It's a way to say, run for your life. Normally we would say, run for your life. To mean, if you don't run, uh, you might die. So run as fast as you can, like you are running, so you don't die. <laughs> so you run for your life. But often we can shorten that as well and just say, run for it, run for it. When you're in a situation that's very serious or scary and you need to escape or leave as quickly as possible. In the next scene, Jack is zapping the bees or shooting the bees with his magic power, with his special power. The zap, the zapping thing that comes from his finger, this laser uh, potentially it's like a laser that comes from his finger and he zaps or he shoots the bees with that laser finger and he says I don't know how long I can hold them off there are too many of them I don't know how long I can hold them off so I don't know how long I can stop the bees if you hold something off you're stopping them uh, coming maybe you're killing one or two or three or four and it's just enough to stop them from attacking you, so you're holding them off. You're not completely killing them all, but you're just stopping them enough so that you can escape or you can stay in your current position. So he doesn't know how long he can stop these bees uh, attacking them. And Curly says, I can't believe the size of those things. So he can't believe how big they are. They are massive. They're much bigger than normal bees, of course, because we are on the planet Marsuvian, Marsuvia. We're on the planet Marsuvia. So these are, we could say, extraterrestrial bees. Extraterrestrial, like E.T., means an alien, an alien. So not a creature or animal from the Earth. So these are extraterrestrial bees. So they are extremely large and also blue and black. 
In the next picture, Jack starts to climb up a tree and he says, up here, up here, Curly, I've got an idea. And Curly says, but Jack, we'll be sitting ducks. So here we can see Jack is climbing the tree. He's got an idea for how to get away from the bees or to stop the bees. But Curly says, no, we'll be sitting ducks. We'll be sitting ducks. If you're a sitting duck, it means that you're in a very vulnerable position. So if you imagine a hunter with a gun who's going around looking to hunt a duck. Well, if the duck, if a duck flies past, then he's got some chance of hitting the duck, but maybe he'll miss. But if a duck is just sitting on the water, completely still, then it's very easy for the hunter to shoot the duck. So if you're a sitting duck, you're in a very vulnerable position. Probably because, it, well, in this situation, they will be in a tree. They'll be stuck in the tree. They won't be able to move or run away. So they'll be sitting ducks. They'll just be waiting for the bees to attack them. But Jack seems to have an idea. So Jack says, no, we won't, Curly. Get ready. And it looks like Jack is about to jump. And Jack does. Jack jumps on the back of one of these bees. And he says, it can't sting you if you're on its back, Curly. And Curly does the same. He jumps onto the bee and shouts, true. So they've jumped onto these bees and are holding on and, f and are flying with these bees. Because when they're on the back of the bee, the bee can't sting them. Okay, so on the next page, Curly says, this is even more fun than a hover scooter. And Jack says, yep, just a little harder to steer and parking might be a slight problem. So Curly's saying it's even more fun than a hover scooter. So a hover scooter is already a lot of fun. And this is really surprising because this is even more fun than that. And Jack is saying, yeah, it's just a little harder to steer. When you steer the car or you steer um, a plane or a boat, you are turning it left and turning it right. You're controlling the direction it goes in to steer it. So, of course, on a bee, you can't really steer the bee. I don't know how you would steer it. Maybe you'd pull it or you would uh, pinch it <coughs> to steer it. Um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> so it's a little bit harder to steer. And Jack says, and parking might be a slight problem. So parking is when you stop your car. You stop your car, you get out of the car, you close the door and you lock it. So you can park it on the side of the street or you can park it in a car park or in a garage at home. So he's saying it might be a little problem to stop the bee and also uh, we won't be able to get them back as well. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to park these bees as if they are cars, but they're not. Now in the neck on the next page, Jack uh, Curly, first of all, says, hey, there's some sort of commotion on the edge of town. And Jack says, let's see if we can steer these fellas over there and check it out. So Curly is saying there's some kind of commotion. Now, commotion is lots of noise that people make, especially when there is some confusion or chaos. So some uh, bad thing is happening and all he can hear is is some shouting, some different noises, and that is commotion. There's a lot of commotion on the edge of the town. And Jack says, let's see if we can steer these fellas over there and check it out. So these fellas, fella, is an informal way to say a man, a guy, a fella, a fella. So let's see if we can take these bees, these fellas, over to the commotion and check it out. See what it is. See what is happening. Now I'm just going to take 10 seconds in the middle of this video for a short advert. If you would like to support my channel and everything I do, then you can do that from £2 a month 
on my Patreon page. The details are here. Um, now, if you do that, every month you have a chance of winning a free lesson. Now, my lessons vary in price, but they usually start from £30 or more per lesson. So if you win one, uh, if you win a lesson for £2, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> so you can also have the opportunity to support my channel and everything I do and help me to make more videos every month for people. If you can't support me monetarily with money, you can also just like this video and write a comment, subscribe, all of these individual actions help my channel to grow and to give me more time to make videos. So thank you very much for that. Let's get back to the video. So in this next scene, they both arrive and one of them says, that headset must generate some sort of mind control over that grizzly bear. And here we can see a little man on the back of this bear and he has some kind of device on the top of his head, which is connected to the top of the bear's head. So they think that they, he is using this device to control the mind of the bear and to make the bear do what he wants. And you can see that there is a big hole in the side of this building. So the bear has broken through the wall and the man has a bag of something, maybe a bag of money, maybe it's a bank. We don't know, but he's stolen something from this place and he's using the bear uh, as a way to get in and also as a way to escape. And you can see the bear has just hit this little space car, a hover car, one that doesn't go on the ground, it hovers. He's hit this space hover car, this police hover car. And here is probably someone who's, wor who's working with him because he has the same clothes, but he's nearly been hit by the bear. And then someone else, uh, maybe just a pedestrian, a person who's walking on the street nearby, and he's running away. Now, the other person on the B, I don't know if it's Jack or if it's... Um, I th okay, I think this must be uh, Jack, because it has some red, and he's wearing red. And then here, this must be Curly. And Curly says, is he a bareback rider? <laughs> so, bareback. So, what does this mean? Well, bear is one of these words in English which... Uh, can have lots of meanings and it has a couple spellings too so when we you spell the word b-a-r-e b-a-r-e and we say that you ride a horse bareback it means that the horse doesn't have a saddle on it and the horse has a saddle which is the seat you put on on the horse um then it's not bareback riding you're riding the horse with the saddle but if you remove the saddle and you just sit on the back of the horse with no saddle, then it's called bare back riding. Because when something is bare, it means it's without clothes or without something. So bare back horse riding is without the saddle. Uh, now note that also, that this is also a sexual term as well, <laughs> which I will say, um, if you uh, have sex bareback, it means without a condom. Okay, so it always has this meaning of without clothes or without something. Now, in this case, he makes a joke. He says, is he a bareback rider? Because he's on the back of a bear. Not B-A-R-E, but B-E-A-R in this case. Now, let's see what happens next. Here are Jack and Curly. Curly says, get it? Bareback rider? I can be quite funny sometimes. And uh, Jack says, let's test the strength of this mind control device. Grizzly bears love Zumblebum honey. So first of all, uh, Curly says, get it? Get it? So he means, did you understand my joke? If you got the joke, you understood it. So did you get it? Get it? Bareback rider, I can be quite funny sometimes. And then Jack says, let's test the strength of this mind control device. So let's see how strong this mind control device on the bear's head is. Because these bears love the honey from Zumblebum bees. So maybe 
this mind control device is not strong enough to stop the bear wanting the honey. And here, Jack is removing the honey or the honeycomb from his backpack. Thought so. The mind control device isn't strong enough to override the bear's desire. That bear's only got one thing on his mind. This honey. And here is the bear about to eat the honey with his tongue sticking out, with his tongue sticking out. And the man says, Oi! 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 <laughs> Which is a way to kind of get someone's attention. Or or to or we use it when someone has done something wrong. Oi! Or if someone says something rude to you, you could say, Oi! So here in this case, the bear is doing something wrong. And the man is saying, Oi! Oi, bear, stop that. Oi. And here is Jack handing over the honeycomb to the bear. So let's have a look at this word, override. When something overrides something else, it's more powerful or more complex than the first thing. And then the first thing doesn't matter anymore or doesn't work. So this other thing, it overrides it, becomes more important and it works despite this first thing. So for example, during COVID, okay, before COVID, everyone had the right to leave the house. Okay, that was a that was a right. <laughs> no one could have stopped us leaving the house, right? That was one of our, our human rights. We could go outside. However, then COVID happened and the world changed and new rules came into place. And so some of these new rules said, no, if you're ill, if you have COVID, you have to stay at home. So this new rule overrode the old one. Okay, There was one before which said, you can go out, you know, you're free to do that. That is our human right. But then this new rule overrode the other one. So it, it became more important and it, it meant that the other one did not apply anymore. The other rule did not apply anymore. And the same thing you could do on a computer. When you have a set of instructions on a computer, if you're very clever with computers, if you're a hacker, someone who can uh, go into other people's computers, settings, change things secretly, steal things from people on the internet, hacker, then you might be able to create a set of instructions which is more important. And these set of instructions override the first set of instructions. So that's what override is. And in this case, the bear's honey, desire for honey, the bear wants honey and its desire for honey is, 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 is so strong that the mind control device cannot override it. It cannot override it. It cannot go over it. It cannot stop this original desire. It's just too strong. So in this case, the bear has gone for the honey, uh, even if uh, the, he has a mind control device on, and the man shouts to him and says, Oi! So, last, oh, so we're nearly at the end. We've got now, in this scene, the bear is eating the honeycomb. The man has jumped off of the bear and is starting to run away. And the man says, Tsa! I better leg it! I better leg it! I better leg it! If you better do something, it means you should do something. It's a good idea here to do something. I should leg it. I better leg it. Of course, in normal English, we would say better, but quite often in more colloquial English, the T becomes a glottal stop, which is like, basically, you can't hear the T, and it becomes better. I better leg it. But what does leg it mean? To leg it means to run away, to leg it. If the police uh, appear and you have just committed a crime, then you would say leg it leg it okay you run you run okay or if someone uh, is very angry with you someone wants to beat you up they want to beat you up and you see them you might leg it you might leg it so he says i better run away i should run away i better leg it i better leg it and here is jack on the back of the zumblebee the bumblebee the zumblebee and he says there you go big fella don't eat it all at once there you go, big fella. 
big fella is what he's calling the bear. So fella, again, means man or guy. Uh, but you could apply it to animals as well, I suppose. It's not very common, but of course, you might do that. So in this case, he's calling the bear a big fella, big fella. And here, a fight starts to happen. A fight starts to happen. Jack jumps on the man and says, oh, no, you don't. What does he mean? Oh, no, you don't. He means, oh, no, you are not going to run away. You are not going to run away. Oh, no, you don't. You don't run away. Oh, no, you don't. Boof. The man lands on the ground with his arms stretched out. And Jack, Jack, and then the man seems to kick Jack off. And Jack goes flying back. And then the man tries to punch Jack. And he swings his arm round. And we see swish swish and jack ducks he ducks that's when you dodge something and you dodge something something's coming at you and you move out of the way when you duck you move down when something's coming at you if someone shoots at you you might duck or if someone throws a snowball at you you might duck so he ducks the punch and then he comes up with a big uppercut an uppercut uppercut a punch that goes upwards, an uppercut, paff, and the man goes flying backwards. Final line of this comic strip today. Here are Jack and Curly eating some of the honeycomb and also the big fella, the big bear, eating its honeycomb too. And Jack says, you just need to know how to handle grizzlums. Lovely creature, really, unlike his master. And here we can see that this is the man. Here he is saying, kids, kids. And here we've got some strange symbols. Probably this means he's swearing. Maybe saying the F word or something. Kids, oh, fuck, (laughs) something. And then um, Jack here says, yikes, doesn't bear thinking about. (laughs) Okay. Uh, so I think this is in response to the policeman. So let's see. What does the policeman says? Well done, lads. They'd cleaned out world of biscuit. The town would have been completely without biscuits for hours without you. So here we learn that the man actually stole biscuits. <laughs> so this is a biscuit factory, a place that makes biscuits. And he has a big bag of biscuits here. And the police officer says, well done, lads. Lads is another way to say boys, boys. A lad is a bit like a fella. Fella is a more slang or colloquial way to say a man or a boy. Though a lad is usually younger. So uh, usually someone who's an adolescent, a teenager or a bit older, maybe between the age of 10 and 30 or something like that. You, You might use the word lad. But it could be applied generally to uh, to guys in general. But it usually it's more around those ages. So uh, they cleaned out World of Biscuit. So they'd taken out, they cleaned out, they cleaned out. So it means here that they'd uh, not cleaned, they hadn't cleaned the factory, but they'd taken everything out of the factory. So there was nothing left. They'd cleaned it out. And the town would have been without any biscuits for hours, for hours, without you. And then here is when uh, Curly says, yikes, doesn't bear thinking about. So yikes is like a funny way, usually very common in cartoons uh, to say, oh, God, oh, no, Ugh, that's terrible. Yikes. Um, it doesn't bear thinking about. So again, we've got the word bear as well. So if something doesn't bear thinking about, it means that you don't even want to think about it. It's such an unpleasant thing to think about. You don't want to think about it. That doesn't bear thinking about. It doesn't bear thinking about. It's not something that uh, would be enjoyable to think about. It doesn't bear thinking about. Um, And in this case, he's talking about living without biscuits. (laughs) So had this man been successful, there would not have been any biscuits. And the town would have been hungry for biscuits for hours. And he says, it doesn't bear thinking about. I don't want to think about it. Okay, so that is the end of our comic strip today. I hope you enjoyed Jack Silver. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Before I finish, 
I have a couple questions for you for to give you an opportunity to practice. So let's have a look. Okay, first question is when they get on the hover scooter, why is Jack Silver relaxed? Why is he not worried about the uh, the Zumblebum, Zumblebum bees that are about to arrive. Of course, you can pause the video here to answer the question. So you could say something like this. He is relaxed even though the Zumblebum bees are about to arrive because he has his hover scooter. And so his hover scooter must be a fast vehicle and would easily take them away from the Zumblebum bees. Of course, this is before he realizes that it's not working, it won't start. So, second question for you. Okay, <clears throat> second question is, why does Jack decide to climb the tree? What's his idea? Again, you can pause the video to answer the question and then I'll give you the answer. So Jack decides to climb the tree so that he can jump on to one of the Zumblebum bees. Uh, and that's his way to escape all the other bees. So it's quite an original idea. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks very much and I will see you again soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye everyone.